This is Haider Mansouri. Today I'm going to talk about sentence patterns. We all know that sentence patterns are uh, pivotal to uh, understand how we can possibly construct simple sentences in English. And this relates directly to sentence structure. By now, uh, you should know that words have structure. Uh, sentences have structure, phrases as well have structure. And to understand structure, you need to understand that there are three levels of structure. The first structure has to do with the semantic level that has to do with meaning. The semantic structure involves the role of each word or phrase in the meaning of the sentence. Um, so according to this analysis, uh, you can you can encounter um, terms such as this one agent or doer as the actor of the verb. Okay. Um, also, you could um, you could encounter a term such as patient, meaning the person or thing acted upon by the verb or instrument, the thing which is used to act upon the patient um, or a benefactive, the person who gets the benefit of the action. Um, or the possessor, the person or a thing which owns or has possession of an object. So again, semantic structure simply has to do with meaning. Also, there is the relational structure. We can analyze um, sentences according to the relation of the constituents to each other. And... Um, Relational structure simply has to do with the function of those words, the function of those components. Um, it refers to the role of each construction and the relation to the other elements in the sentence. Um, and according to this analysis, you could um, encounter um, terms such as subject, object predicate modifier the ones that are mostly common you uh, that the ones that are commonly used these terms are commonly used and we um, basically use in this class and there is also the categorical structure of sentences or analyzing sentences uh, categorically analyzing com constituents of sentences categorically um, and in this analysis in this kind of structure analysis um, we deal with how the entire sentence is broken into parts that is phrases and how these can be broken into individual parts of a speech or vice versa how individual parts of a speech are put together to form phrases which are combined to form sentences. Now, this level of structure um, has to do with form. The parts of a speech that um, work on this level uh, could be classified into form classes, um, or what we called in a previous video, content words, and structure classes, uh, what we called function words. Uh, so the important for class parts of speech are um, noun, verb, adjective, adverb. The important structure class parts of speech are determiners, prepositions, conjunctions. At the basic level, you need to um, keep in mind when you want to analyze sentences that the, 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 the element of meaning is always a present However, sometimes you do that according to the relation of the components to each other or according to the form, according um, to the, ca the categories uh, to which those components belong. And in order to, uh, to understand um, sentence analysis and to, to understand sentence structure, you need to be familiar with the major sentence constituents. 
um, and those are the subject, the verb, the object, and the object that could be of two types, direct object and indirect objects. The complement is also a very uh, crucial constituent and could be of two types, subject complement or object complement, and the adverbial complement, which is an optional um, constituent. Um, now, uh, sentence uh, structure or um, sentences could be understood in terms of pattern and um, if you consider the first three patterns um, all of them have the verb to be as the main verb however in the first pattern we have a noun a phrase this is uh, the subject and the verb to be as a predicating verb and an adverb either of time or of place uh, now uh, you need to understand that the first level of the pattern noun or phrase, the verb to be, and adverb time or place. Um, this is according to um, this is according to form, and um, the, the the second line subject predicate and verb adverbial. This is according to function, and again we have the sentence the students are upstairs. Now the students. This is the noun or phrase. The noun or phrase in this position functions as um, as a, as a subject. And R is the predicating verb, and upstairs, this is adverb of a place, and it functions as an adverbial. The second pattern, we have a noun or phrase, and the predicating verb, um, noun or phrase functions as a subject, the predicating verb, the verb to be, and an adjective as subject complement. Again, uh, the students are diligent. The students, this is the noun or phrase, functions as a subject, R, the predicating verb diligent, uh, is an adjective and it is the subject complement. The third pattern, a noun of phrase one functions as a subject, the predicating verb, the verb to be, and noun of phrase one, which functions as a subject complement. The other three patterns, um, the first two, the, the fourth pattern and the fifth one, both of them have linking verbs, okay? So this is the common element between them, that both of them have um, linking verbs as the main verbs. Uh, a pattern number four, um, there is a noun or phrase as a subject, a linking verb as a predicating verb, and an adjective, which functions as a subject complement. Look at the example, the students seem diligent. The students seem diligent. The other, the fifth pattern, we have a noun of phrase one functions as a subject, a linking verb as a predicating verb, and noun of phrase one as subject complement. The students became scholars. Um, pattern number six um, contains intransitive verb as the main verb, intransitive verb. Um, and again, look at the pattern. We have a noun of phrase functions as a subject, an intransitive verb. As a predicating verb, the student, the students rested. Okay, that's it. Let's continue with the with the with the rest of the patterns. Now, uh, patterns are from seven, eight, nine, and ten. All of these have transitive verb as the main verb. Look at look at pattern number seven. We have a noun of phrase one functions as a subject, transitive verb as a predicating verb, and noun of phrase two as direct object. Okay, functions as a direct object. Pay attention to the example. The students studied their assignment. The students studied their assignment. Pattern number nine. Noun of phrase one functions as a subject. Transitive verb as a predicating verb. However, we have noun of phrase two, which functions as indirect object, and noun of phrase three as direct object. The example, the students gave the professor their homework. And in noun of phrase one, uh, in, in pattern number 10, we have noun of phrase one as functions as a subject, transitive verb as a predicating verb, Noun of phrase two as direct object and an adjective which functions as object complement. The students consider the teacher intelligent. Okay, now this is object complement because it has to do with the teacher. Noun of phrase one, a transitive verb, 
as a predicating verb, noun or phrase two, direct object, noun or phrase two, object complement, object complement. However, uh, it's a noun or phrase, not an adjective. The students consider the course a challenge. Uh, these are these are the basic ten patterns that we uh, with which we can construct uh, simple sentences in English. Uh, please review them, and if you have any questions, let me know.